Chapter 110 Killing. It's Mogo. Boudica reacted first, but she didn't panic. Act on Plan B. The yellow lanterns of the Sinestro Corps flew through the atmosphere and stopped in front of Mogo. Because he was worried that gravitational field would affect Oa, Mogo was still far away from Oa, which gave the yellow lanterns enough time to use their tactics. Green lanterns stopped them, Kilowog shouted, and wanted to rush forward. No matter what the Yellow Lantern Corps wants to do, they must stop it. But Kilowog's action was stopped by Toma Ray before it even started. Toma, do you, do you really want to be our enemy? Have you forgotten your identity? However, Toma Ray could not hear his words at all. The yellow light occupied his mind and distorted his character. Toma smiled evilly. For Sinestro, the yellow light turned into a snake head of huge amounts, opened its mouth wide, and rushed towards Kilowog. Kilowog was furious, and the green light turned into a 40-meter-long knife, directly cutting the snake's head in two. But Toma, who was hiding behind, turned his hands into thorns and attacked insidiously. Kilowog didn't check for a moment and was stabbed in the waist by one of them. The green light protective cover was like paper in front of the yellow light weapon. Toma wanted to repeat the same trick with the other one, but Kilowog pinched it with his big hand. His huge strength made it difficult for Toma to break free for a while. Kilowog grabbed his 24 body and endured the physical pain and hit Toma's vitals with all his strength. Even though Toma was protected by a yellow light shield, he was still able to break through the defense with a single blow without sacrificing his life. The two entangled and fell from the sky, once again adding a pit to the devastated earth and Sinestro and Hal, who were deep in the center of the earth, were also rising while fighting each other. Sometimes you would punch, and sometimes I would kick. The yellow flaw is not an absolute flaw of Green Lantern. If Green Lantern's heart is firm enough to overcome fear, then the yellow flaw will not become a problem for Green Lantern. But there are very few people who can do this, and there are not many people on the entire OA who can do it. You're not going to make it Sinestro. Hal put his hands together and fired the light cannon, and Sinestro waved it away. He pointed the ring in his hand, and several rays of yellow light transformed into a humanoid duplication, grabbing Hal's limbs up, down, left, and right. Sinestro's yellow light ring was connected to a meteor hammer, which hit him in the face with the help of inertial force, sending him flying far away. This wasn't the end yet. A dazzling yellow light lit up on the human figures holding Hal. Hal struggled violently to no avail, and there was a loud bang. The duplication bomb exploded, and Hal ate the yellow light energy bomb head-on, and the momentum pushed him up from the ground into the sky. Although he protected himself with a force field shield in time, he still felt excruciating pain all over his body. But these are not the worst. The worst thing is that the green light energy reserve has been dangerously low. Hal's expression changed drastically at this time, and he suddenly remembered what Dane had said to him. Then he quickly left the battlefield and looked for the location of the central energy battery. However, Sinestro also felt something was wrong during the battle. When he saw Hal leaving, he chased after him without any hesitation. Before leaving, he temporarily handed over command to Boudicca, who knew all of Sinestro's previous plans. And Boudicca did not betray his trust, leading the rebellious former Green Lantern and current Yellow Light Energy users to attack the remaining Green Lanterns. And these remaining Green Lanterns were retreating steadily under the enemy's attack. In space, the Yellow Lantern Corps began to collaborate, and they built a wormhole wit, H a diameter that was almost half the file size of Oa. From the wormhole emitting yellow light, the tip of the iceberg of another world emerged, which was the planet Karuga. Individuals are powerless against the power of the planet. Dane was still thinking before. Even Superman has nothing to do with the planet Mogo. How will Sinestro deal with him? Now he has the answer. The only thing that can deal with planet is another planet. Moreover, Karuga is not a primitive planet like Mogo. It is an aerospace civilization that has developed to a high-tech level. The Yellow Lantern Corps stabilized the wormhole passage, while countless space battleships set sail on Karuga, aiming directly at Mogo. Green light lit up on Mogo Star, and a beam of light shot out like a torrent. However, 
The starships on Karuga are all painted in yellow, and each battleship is equipped with a different number of Yellow Lantern warriors. Mogo's green torrent failed to play its due role, and could only sit back and watch the Karuga aliens wearing yellow battle armor land. The war between Mogo and Karuga begins. Seeing the Green Lantern Corps retreating steadily, and the Green Lantern rings scattered on the ground like raindrops, Gunther finally couldn't help but ask Dane for help. This man is so cruel that he can actually sit back and watch Green Lantern suffer heavy casualties. Helpless, he could only bow to Dane. Dane looked at him, smiled and said, Remember the conditions you promised me. After saying that, he lifted himself up and flew into the sky, stirring up the clouds. One move can be used all over the world. Fighting in the atmosphere, this move is always so useful. He swept away the hurricane with a wave of his hand, and the swirling atmosphere was like a huge amount of millstone, enveloping everyone within it. Boudica saw the culprit, the old god, whom he had seen once on Earth. She hid her figure and ordered several of her men to come forward to confront him. The other members of the Yellow Lantern Corps did not understand Dane's strength, so they rushed over with cruel smiles. Dane saw that some people dared to trouble him, and he had to admire the courage of these people. Very brave. However, he grabbed the one closest to him by the neck. In full view of everyone, he performed the unique skill of tearing the Japanese to death with his hands on the spot. The yellow light soldier was like a rag doll, controlled by his hands, starting from the upper trapezius muscle next to the neck, and tearing the person in half like tearing pieces of paper. The gushing blood instantly wetted his upper body, and the other yellow figures flying close to him immediately froze, then turned around and ran away without any hesitation. Mercury's speed was activated, and he easily caught up with the deserters. Here he doesn't have to care about human rights or image at all. Although they are all in human form, he cannot empathize. So the Green Lantern Corps and the Sinestro Corps were lucky enough to see Shazam's first merciless massacre in this world. Dane's arm was wrapped with lightning, and with a slight wave, several human heads rolled out. Because the speed was too fast, many heads still had expressions of fear. In the realm of super speed, Dane harvests the lives of slow-speed people wantonly, like a hard-working farmer harvesting crops in the field. His attack is simple and unpretentious, with no strong light and shadow, except for the fleeting lightning. There is no grand scene, except for the hurricane that is still raging. He uses the most common fists and kicks, but every move is filled with incomparable divine power, which is unstoppable, invincible. Anyone who dares to block the 467 road will be torn into pieces. Those who dare to fight back will be destroyed. All the way to flight is all the way to killing. Where his flight passed, Rain of blood and broken flesh fell like fallen leaves, and were then broken into pieces by the E-Hurricane. Just like Yellow Lantern's first attack, Dane's first attack caused countless yellow rings to rain from the sky. They were swept closer to Dane in the hurricane. Intelligent life has been locked. Dane Davis from Galaxy Solar System, you have the ability to inflict great fear on others. You belong to the Sinestro Corps. Dane waved his hand, and the divine thunder came out of his hand and exploded onto the flying lantern rings. However, a few minutes later, the yellow lantern rings that were blown away gathered together again. Smart life has been locked. Smart life has been locked. Intelligent life has been locked. Annoying. Dane looked disgusted, and he didn't like yellow either. He moved quickly in the air, almost becoming a phantom, and he clenched his hands into fists and placed them in front of him. Relying on the hardness of the body, the speed of movement, and the indestructible power of thunder and lightning, Ruth he transformed into a water droplet and ran rampant in front of the yellow creation. There was a loud noise wherever it passed, which symbolized that another yellow enemy was eliminated. This scene should have made the Green Lantern Corps happy, but it made them feel even more fearful. However, even so, the Yellow Lantern Ring did not choose a successor among these people. Instead, he still pursues Dane tirelessly. Even Gunther and the other Asgardians standing on the ground couldn't help but feel a little fear in their hearts. Chapter 1 Lem Destined Fusion On the other side, Hal has entered the Central Energy Battery Room. Because it is protected by the energy of the green light, 
it has not been affected by attacks from the outside world. Hal entered the place and recited the oath to the lantern battery without saying a word. He did not notice that Sinestro had followed him in. By the time he noticed it, Sinestro's sneak attack had already succeeded and injured him. Weird, isn't it? Taking advantage of Hal's temporary powerlessness, Sinestro used yellow light energy to photograph him in front of him, but his eyes were focused on the ring in his hand. The newly charged ring emitted a dazzling green light, but the more Sinestro looked at it, the more he felt that something was wrong with the ring. He controlled Hal's hand to lift up and forcibly connected the yellow lantern ring and the green lantern ring together. Time in the real world has almost stopped, and Sinestro's spirit has entered the world of the Green Lantern Ring. It's unbelievable. It turns out there is such a world in the Lantern Ring. This is a world that even Sinestro had never seen before when he was still serving the Green Lantern Corps. However, what surprised him the most was not this. His light ring felt something was here, something that was closely related to him. He saw a floating city not far away and flew up to it without hesitation. As soon as he got close, a roar came from the floating city. A three. Then a giant yellow eye as big as a millstone lit up, staring at Sinestro violently. However, instead of being angry, he was happy and burst into laughter. The parallax monster is actually a parallax monster. But just as he finished speaking, a green fist hit his face and knocked him away. Stay away from it, Sinestro. However, after Hal appeared, a huge yellow claw suddenly stretched out from the middle of the floating city and almost caught him. Seeing that no one was caught, the parallax monster's angry roar became louder. Sinestro, on the other hand, laughed and flew back. He did not continue to struggle with Hal and just flew in the direction of the parallax monster. Although Hal tried many ways to prevent him from approaching, the experienced Sinestro still found an opportunity to get close to the parallax monster. Supplemented by Sinestro's energy, Parallax finally had enough energy to break through the confinement of the floating city. And the moment it broke out of the seal, Dane also noticed something and stopped. At the moment there was no trace of yellow in the sky, and the blood on Dane's body was burned clean by the friction of the air. In the world of the ring, Sinestro, who released the Parallax monster, did not stop but directly entered its body. Parallax did not refuse, not only because their powers were from the same source, but also because it felt that Sinestro's powers were in perfect harmony with its own, even better than Har. Hal was powerless to stop it at this time. He could only watch them merge into one. Immediately, a new Parallax Demon was born in front of Hal's eyes. Unlike the previous Parallax Demons, Sinestro's appearance has not changed much. Oh, I wonder if the extra cloak on his back counts? In short, Sinestro's current feeling is that its energy intensity is very high. Moreover, his consciousness is not controlled by the Parallax monster. He is still himself. Hal's feeling was right. Sinestro had never felt better than he did today. The Parallax monster definitely tried to control his will, but it was so ridiculous that a bug also tried to control him. Sinestro's pride made him completely immune to Parallax's control, which in turn controlled Parallax. He looked at Hal in the distance and couldn't help but think of their last battle on Karuga. Hal swore that he just blinked, but when he opened it again, he found that Sinestro was close at hand. He was hit without any reaction at all, and there was severe pain in his abdomen, which made him arch his waist and fly out like a full moon. However, he didn't even know what hit him until he flew out. Sinestro said intoxicatedly, Ah, it's this power. I finally got it. He originally had a plan to capture the Parallax Monster, but he didn't expect that the Parallax Monster would be sealed in Hal's ring, which would save him another trip to Earth. Just when he turned around and wanted to leave, a beam of green light enveloped him like a cage. Sinestro turned around and saw that it was Hal. You can't go anywhere. Sinestro just sneered and waved his hand, the green cage burst open, and he immediately returned to reality. This place was too close to green light energy, and he was worried that Hal would suddenly explode like last time, and only one loss would be enough. Sinestro, who had returned to reality mentally, had just come to his senses when a figure tore through the dome and descended from the void. Sinestro looked back and saw a strong man in red, 
but wearing a white robe, and his expression immediately changed. He integrated with the parallax monster and naturally gained its memory, so he not only knew this man, and I also know that this man has formed a very troublesome organization on Earth. He threw Hal away, who was blocking the way, and did something that everyone present did not expect. He flew into the green light energy source. Then yellow light energy quickly emerged from the center of the green light energy source, and the green glow of the battery dimmed visibly to the naked eye. Dane sensed something coming at the moment. He grabbed Hal with one hand and flew directly through the ceiling into the sky. Two seconds later, yellow light radiated in all directions, and huge amounts of energy flow burst out from the central energy chamber. When Dane and Hal saw Sinestro again, they saw that his whole body had turned yellow, as if he had become a body made of energy. But this is not enough, far from enough. He stared at Dane and Hal for a while. In just a few seconds, he had already surrounded the entire battlefield of Oa. Even he couldn't help but feel frightened by Dane's killing efficiency. Under the influence of this state of mind, he decided to play it safe. He himself is far from reaching his limit. Thinking of this, Sinestro transformed into a ray of yellow light and flew into space. His decision was correct. Whether Dane's own energy can match Sinestro's is unknown but he definitely has the ability to kill the opponent with one blow. The kiss of death has not yet drunk blood on Oa. The reason why parallax monsters cannot be killed is because their life essence is different and difficult to kill. But Sinestro himself was not like this. He was hit by the kiss of death immediately. Sinestro may have instinctively sensed the crisis coming from Dane, so even if he knew that the other party had massacred his men, he could still endure it for the time being. He is quite a hero. In space, there are still a group of his subordinates who have not been killed. Boudica is one of them. She hid in space early, so she escaped Dane's massacre, and Toma didn't know whether it was lucky or unlucky. He escaped Dane's sweep because he was fighting with Kilowog at the time. Kilowog's entanglement also saved his life to a certain extent, otherwise he would have been taken care of by Dane. At the end of the fight, Looking at the broken corpses belonging to the Yellow Lantern Corps around him, the Toma people were stunned. He just switched sides? Has the situation reversed? Kilowog took advantage of his carelessness and suddenly attacked him. He showed up with a mace and knocked him unconscious with a hammer, and then removed his Yellow Lantern ring. He looked around, and even though he had experienced hundreds of battles, he still found it difficult to accept the sight of mountains of corpses and seas of blood. This is not in line with Green Lantern's values, and no one was left alive. But he couldn't say anything, because he was just helping, not a member of the Green Lantern Corps, and was not bound by the rules of the Lantern Corps. Dane had basically wiped out all the enemies on Ua, and even some of the Yellow Lantern Corps that were still alive were frightened by Dane, and were completely useless. Taking Hal with them, they flew to and landed near Asgardian. Sinestro has stolen the energy from the lantern battery and now has more energy in his body than all of us. Sinestro had just plundered the energy and the little blue man had already gotten the information. They obviously had a secret arrangement for the lantern battery. Originally, they thought the situation was bad enough, but Dane also brought new bad news. One more thing you need to know is that Sinestro has obtained the Parallax Monster and his strength has once again exploded. He looked up at the sky. The life on that planet may not be his opponent now. Chapter 112, Battle Against Sinestro. As Dane said, Sinestro has now reached the same level as Mogo in terms of energy level alone. Planet Green Lantern Mogo, Dane guesses that she has a similar origin to the city spirit and belongs to the Gaia life system. So Dane thought for a while and guessed. Sinestro wants to assimilate the life on this planet into the Yellow Lantern Corps. If it were before, Sinestro's ability alone would not be possible. But now, with the increase of Parallax Monster, he has this ability. Parallax Monsters can induce fear in the hearts of living beings. This ability has nothing to do with the opponent's strength and size. A Green Lantern that is only related to the subject's mind and can overcome fear on its own. Even if he is only file size of a bee, he is still great. 
the Green Lantern who cannot overcome his inner fear, even Mogo, will collapse when faced with the Parallax monster. In fact, there is indeed an alien named BZD, who looks like a bee among the Green Lantern Corps and became the Green Lantern, and he happens to be the partner of planet Green Lantern Mogo. This little guy's willpower is superior to that of most Green Lanterns, and he especially likes to appuge things on the island to attack the enemy. And what about Mogo? Can she overcome her fears? For a special life form like her, the most fearful things are nothing more than two things. First, life on the planet suffered a devastating blow and became extinct on a large scale. The second is that one's own consciousness is erased and becomes a pure celestial body without thoughts. And these two points make the Nisto Legion happen to have the ability to do it. Strictly speaking, Karuga can do the first point, and Sinestro can do the second point, and he made good use of these two weaknesses of Mogo. First, use the yellow flaw of Green Lantern 750 to equip Karuga's fleet with yellow weapons to attack the planet's ecosystem and surface. Then use the Parallax monster to psychologically intimidate the living beings. Soon, even the huge living beings like Mogo were retreating steadily under the attack of the Sinestro Corps. How come? The scene before him was beyond the expectations of the Asgardians, but Dane was not surprised. This is a conflict of attributes designed to target weaknesses, and Dane believes that Sinestro still has room for strength, because he couldn't have known in advance that the Parallax monster was sealed in Hal's ring, but he still came, which means that he actually had a backup plan, but it should be no longer needed now. Gunther immediately turned to look at Dane. Do something. Dane nodded readily, but Ganser's blood pressure increased when he said, More money! God damn more money! Ganser understood that this was asking him to increase the stakes. The previous conditions were no longer enough. Thinking rationally, this is not something we cannot help but understand. Solving a Sinestro is completely different from solving a Parallax monster, but didn't you bring the Parallax monster? Dane seemed to see what he meant, but he just said, if you weren't so careless, how could the Parallax Demon be lost on Earth? We even helped you solve the problem that you should have solved. How dare you blame me for bringing Parallax Monster back? He even turned against the guest. What's the point? Ah, this is not unreasonable. But Gunther still seriously suspected that Dane deliberately allowed Sinestro to integrate the Parallax Monster just so that he could blackmail them at the moment but the matter was serious, so he didn't grit his teeth and agreed. However, this time Dane asked other little blue people to sign this agreement together, and he was ready for the contract. This was a magical version of the contract. The previous one was just a verbal agreement between him and Gunther. He believed in Gunther's integrity and didn't sign it in writing. But others, sorry, we are neither our relatives nor friends, and we are not familiar with each other. Why should I trust you? Moreover, Dane knows a lot of dirty information about these little blue men. They are as well versed in the dark ways as some politicians on the earth. It is better to use magic to restrain them. As an immortal race, the Asgardians must have seen magic, so they checked every corner of the contract very carefully, not missing any pattern or edge. Not to mention, they actually discovered several loopholes. When Dane saw this, he could only modify the contract with a tsk sound. After he finished changing it, the little blue people signed their names. At this time, the situation on Mogo's side was already precarious. Hal followed Dane throughout the whole process, dumbfounded as he skillfully negotiated with the little blue people, almost thinking that he was also a politician. But after Dane took back the contract, he slapped him on the head. What are you looking at? Work. Oh, oh. Hal scratched his head and decided not to care about these things. In space, Sinestro is exerting psychic influence on Mogo. He has successfully aroused the fear in the other party, but it will take some time for him to conquer this planet, but it is obvious that he cannot have that much time. With his peripheral vision, he had already noticed two light spots flying from the direction of Ua. They were Hal and the Earthling who gave him a sense of threat. Sinestro thought that Hal would be his opponent this time, but he was wrong. He didn't know what the Earthling said to Hal, telling him to turn around and deal with Karuga's fleet, 
while the strange earthling flew towards this side. He's very fast. Just as Sinus was thinking about it, a head approached him. His combat awareness was still very good, and he immediately sidestepped and dodged the blow. But Dane's attacks don't stop with his fists. Just when Sinestro was about to fight back, he saw a white arc of electricity lighting up on the earthling's body, and the arc jumped as if alive. The speed of electricity was unmatched by him, and an electric snake bite directly on his body, paralyzing him all over. Sinestro found that his yellow light shield did not protect him well, and the blow was too painful. But Dane felt exactly the opposite. He felt that the turtle shell on Sinestro's body was too hard, and he didn't even break it open. However, Sinestro was not unable to fight. He quickly regained his strength and began to fight back. He used the yellow light tool to reveal a lifelike monster, and it bit Dane with its teeth and claws. Dane grabbed the beast's upper and lower jaws with both hands and tore them in half. However, Sinestro's energy was nearly endless, and countless monsters rushed towards him. From a distance, it looks like a group of behemoths fighting for small prey. But Dane is not afraid. No matter what monster comes up, he will tear it apart. Sinestro was hiding among them and suddenly gave Dane a black punch while he was concentrating on clearing out the mobs. But Dane was punched head-on and his head only moved back a few centimeters. This instead allowed him to find Sinestro's location. He grabbed Sinestro and punched him. The powerful punch was like hitting an ox across a mountain, punching through the monster behind Sinestro. But Sinestro is indeed the best host for Parallax Monster. With the help of yellow light energy, he quickly recovered from his injuries. He simply stopped hiding and materialized two fist gloves to completely wrap his arms, and then started fighting with Dane. The aftermath of the collision of lightning and yellow light spread into a flaky impact fan in space, destroying the monster Sinestro had created previously. Dane discovered that although Sinestro's physical strength was not high, he was able to fight with him with his super-fast recovery speed. Moreover, the yellow energy on the opponent's body was obviously increasing. He knew in his heart that Mogo was providing fear energy to the opponent. Good guy, this is using Mogo as a blood bottle. But it wasn't a big problem. Dane used super speed to get close to him again. But this time his arm shook, and a dark stinging needle stretched out. Sinestro's expression changed. The moment he saw the black thorn, the parallax monster frantically called the police in his mind and he flew back without hesitation. Dane flew up. Sinestro retreated while using yellow light to create obstacles to buy himself time. Dane held the kiss of death in front of him like an awl, vowing to pierce it. At the critical moment, Sinestro suddenly opened his mouth. The parallax monster jumped out of his mouth, two long arms stretched out. He closed his palms together, locking Dane in his palms. Sinestro took the opportunity to construct a super bomb and stuffed it directly into the palm of Parallax Monster. Then he flew away, since the Parallax Monster couldn't be killed anyway, so he might as well take advantage of it. There was no sound in the vacuum, but a dazzling bright light suddenly lit up where the Parallax Monster was. The light ball spread outward from the center of the explosion and instantly expanded into a huge amount of sphere. Even the Green Lanterns on Oa can clearly see that brightness. Chapter 113 Death Did you make it? Sinestro couldn't help but have such questions in his mind. In order to kill Dane in one go, the prototype of the super bomb Sinestro embodied was an antimatter annihilation bomb used to destroy the planet's surface and cause large-scale destruction. Its power is even greater than the hydrogen bomb on Earth. Dane has never faced a bomb of this magnitude before. He, who was at the center of the explosion, was finally injured this time. His red battle suit was burned to black, and his white magician robe was turned into ashes. Dane covered his head with his hands, curled his legs, and curled up into a ball. Seeing his miserable state, Sinestro thought he had succeeded, and at the worst, he should have been severely wounded. So he constructed a lightsaber and flew close to him, wanting to give him the final blow. But just when the lightsaber was about to hit Dane, he suddenly stretched out his hand and grasped the lightsaber. Dane raised his pitch-black head. Although his face was pitch-black, his hair was still there, and it would not be blown into a bald head. 
he now felt that there was no pain anywhere in his body. This feeling had not happened for a long time since he transformed into Shazam. Sinestro was shocked that he was not dead, and that his vitality still seemed strong. He held the hilt of the sword with his other hand, and the lightsaber grew toward Dane's chest. Dane turned his lightsaber to one side, and the lightsaber passed by his shoulder. He raised his other hand, instantly cut off the lightsaber, and stabbed Sinestro with the piece in his hand. This was something he constructed, so it was definitely useless, but Dane's powerful power still knocked Sinestro away. Dane made fists with both hands and stretched. Lightning breeds from within, and traces of charred black parts fall off where the arc passes. When all the melanin fades away, a brand new battle suit is revealed inside. Lightning can restore Shazam's injuries, but this method is to use blue bars to restore the blood bar, and the power of lightning will be weaker in a short period of time. Although other divine powers are still abundant, it is difficult to kill Janus Wang with endless energy support through pure physical damage. And judging from the situation just now, Sinestro was obviously deliberately preventing the kiss of death. It's helpless. I can't be a warrior, and I can't be an assassin, so I have to return to my job. After that, Dane took out the necromancer scepter. Stop him! Parallax screamed in Sinestro's head, but it made him jump. The white crystal on the scepter suddenly turned yellow, and in Sinestro's shocked eyes, the scepter lit up with a yellow light. Except for the Flash who has not yet been born, no speedster in this universe can escape the speed of light. So when Sinestro saw the yellow light, he had already been hit by the yellow light. A yellow light connected Dane's scepter to Sinestro, and then a huge amount of phantom detached from Sinestro, it was the Parallax monster. No, Sinestro stretched out his hand, and Parallax tried his best to respond. However, Scepter's power was too overbearing, and he still pulled the Parallax monster out of Sinestro's body and put it into the crystal. A black aura emerged in the center of the crystal, swirling around a small yellow bug. The Death Breath cannot kill Parallax, but it can inflict pain on it constantly. Without the Parallax monster, Nestor can no longer use his own power to exterminate Mogo's fear. This gave the huge amounts of Green Lantern a chance to finally start a counterattack. Mogo lit up the Green Lantern sign again, and a green torrent swept across the universe. It seems to have strengthened its determination this time, and the yellow defect is no longer so difficult to break through. Under the flow of green energy, countless battleships opened gaps, and green light penetrated from the gaps. Although the Ko, Ruga people took advantage of the yellow defect of the green light, it is obvious that the interior of the battleship cannot be all painted yellow. Therefore, under the invasion of green energy, the crew on the ship suffered heavy casualties. Seeing that the situation took a turn for the worse again, Sinestro was about to order his subordinates to activate the last resort, but at this time, he was no longer the parallax demon who could use unlimited yellow light energy. So he didn't notice that Dane had arrived behind him at some point. When he reacted, the kiss of death in Dane's hand had already stabbed into his chest. The power of death was injected into his body, making Nestor feel that his life force was rapidly draining away. Sinestro, who had brought fear to countless people, finally felt fear. He grabbed Dane's hand tightly. No, it shouldn't be like this. I, I still have a lot of things to do. The ultimate order of order. At the last moment before his death, what he was thinking about was that his ideal had not yet been completed. Dane respects such an ideal person, but since he is an enemy, no matter how much he admires him, he will never let him go. Since Sinestro was killed by the kiss of death, his soul definitely belongs to Dane. But while collecting his soul, Dane suddenly felt as if his thoughts were stuck for a moment. Just as at that moment he was placed in someone else's time-stopped realm, this discovery immediately opened up all his perceptions. But it had no effect. He could vaguely detect something, but he couldn't really see it clearly. So Dane abandoned his five senses as a human and used his intuition as a god to explore and perceive. Then, he saw the person in a realm of nothingness. You are so greedy. When she said this, her voice sounded like that of a woman. Although you have obtained the power of death god, this power is limited to the earth. 
Dane tried to speak here. As long as anyone is killed by the kiss of death, his soul should belong to me. I have not violated any rules. He probably guessed who this person was. Slippery. The woman seemed to smile, then turned to leave. Please give me flowers. Wait. Dane suddenly stopped her. In the blur, Dane seemed to see her looking back. There was a very strange feeling lingering in his heart. He seemed to have some memory of this woman's appearance. When was it? What did you want to say when you stopped me? She asked softly. Dane tried to look at her face, but it was hidden in the shadows. I want to see your face. She seemed silent for a moment, and then said with a hint of melancholy, People can only see me twice in a lifetime, Dane. If you see clearly, you will die. I am Death God. Dane disagreed with her statement. But Death God is also mortal, don't you know very well? Your authority was taken from a dead Death God. Dane's will caused the space to vibrate, and green light instantly illuminated the dark space. It's a green light. In this empty space, Dane's magical power cannot work. Zero, but his will can, so he accepted the call of the lantern ring. As a result, the green light was lit here, and it also illuminated the surprised face in front. It was a very delicate face, but it was unnaturally pale. Her clothes are no different from ordinary people, with a hint of gothic style, there is no so-called holy aura or other messy things about her. But you just can't ignore her. Ignore her beauty. Ignore her eyes. Ignore her every move. Dane had recognized her identity. Death, the second in the Endless Family, the ultimate incarnation of all things, is also the boss with the highest priesthood of Death God. She also has a common name named Telt. Dane did not expect that killing a Sinestro would naturally attract his attention, Dane looked at her face carefully and suddenly smiled. Look, I saw your face for the second time, but I didn't die. Death said he, Plesley, did you know? According to the regulations, I can actually take you away now. Then why don't you do that? Dane smiled and said, Maybe then I can stay with you. Aren't you afraid of death? Death looked at him curiously. Dane stared at her face. There was something strangely attractive about the face of death. After seeing you, I suddenly felt that death can actually be a good thing. Death smiled again. Unlike people's imagination, death is actually very easygoing. Dane could feel a pair of hands brushing across his face, and he felt as if there was something extra in his body. But if I take a closer look, I feel nothing. You should leave, eh? Will we meet again? Death stood there quietly, with a gentle look on his face. Yes, everyone can. Dane's consciousness returned to reality. Chapter 114, The Endless Family What an unexpected surprise. Although he had long known that the Endless Family was also playing in the DC universe, he never expected to meet a member of the Endless Family so early. He had previously thought that the Endless Family would not set its sights on this universe. Now that death has appeared, is it possible that the Sandman is also in this universe? Even right here on Earth? Sandman, whose true identity is Dream, ranks third in the Endless Family, second only to death. The story of the Endless Family appears in The Sandman, a work of DC's subsidiary Vertigo Comics. So what is the Endless Family? They are not gods, demons, or humans, but the physical embodiment of seven concepts in the world. They are divided in order, destiny, death, dream, destruction, desire, despair, and delirium. Each member represents two sides of their respective symbolic things. Fate, 360 luck symbolizes both uncontrollable fate and unfettered freedom. In his hand, he holds a book of destiny that is folded with his right hand all year round, which records the past, present, and future of the DC universe. It is similar to the history book in The Adventures of Jackie Chan, so it can be said that destiny knows everything about the DC universe. Death symbolizes both death and life. Without life, there is no death, so when life is born, death will follow. Therefore, according to legend, a person meets her twice in his life, once for birth and once for death. But death not only symbolizes the death of living things, but also symbolizes the demise and end of all things. There was once a DC universe that was destroyed, and death waited until everything in this universe was gone before leaving that universe, just like closing a door. Dream symbolizes both illusory dreams and reality. Without dreams, there would be no reality. According to legend, all gods were born in dreams, and finally returned to dreams, which feels a bit like Brahma and a dream. 
Therefore, Dream knows the origins of most of the gods in the world. Destruction symbolizes both the destruction of things and the creation of all things. Because he saw through the world, he later chose to run away instead of fulfilling his responsibilities. Desire symbolizes both desire and hatred and is the force that maintains the cohesion of everything in the universe. This guy often uses his ability to interfere with the duties of other members of the Endless Family. He is a fun-loving person. Despair, she and desire are twins, symbolizing both despair and hope. She looks very ugly, and she is a guy who died once and then came back to life. Phanasa, also known as delirium or madness, symbolizes both chaos and order. It is the definer of the rules of all things and the guide of all madness. This one rules a chaotic realm, filled with many ruleless things, and she even knows some things that even destiny doesn't know. She used to be a happy person, but something happened that turned her into madness. In terms of setting, the status of the Endless Family is higher than that of God and the angels, and the dream world they live in is also higher than God's heaven. However, status is not the same as combat power. The seven conceptual incarnations with such high status are actually something similar to the way of heaven. They have many restrictions on how to use their power. Although God cannot come to the mortal world at will, he has many ways to project his power into the human world. And the most important thing is that God is the ceiling of combat power in the DC universe, which is almost never exceeded. But the endless families whose status is higher than God are not controlled by human beings. Especially Meng, he even had the experience of being imprisoned by humans for 70 years. In the end, he managed to escape by relying on his endless lifespan to survive the humans who imprisoned him. So in fact, T, despite the fact that the Endless Family is so awesome in terms of settings, they only have bug-like dominance within their own scope of authority, and even God cannot defy this kind of dominance. For example, can God die? Destiny has a small book that records the past and future fate of all living beings. It is clearly stated above that God also has an end time, and when God inevitably goes to death, the death in the Endless Family will come to greet him. However, in ordinary daily life, the Wu Wu family cannot use their power without scruples. For example, in Dream, he cannot kill people outside the Dream World unless it is clear that this person poses a threat to the Dream World. This is also the reason why he, as an incarnation of a concept, is so awesome that he can be imprisoned by a few mortals. But even so, the Endless Family is the most top-notch and special family in the entire DC multi-universe. In the DC worldview, there are many destroyed universes, but the destruction of those universes cannot shake the existence of the Endless Family. As long as there is life in the infinite multi-universe, the Endless Family will continue to exist, and only when the entire DC multi-universe returns to nothingness will death disappear. In this world, many races that once claimed to be immortal can only be regarded as longevity species when the time scale is extended. Only death is the real immortality, coexisting with all things in the universe until the end of everything. And Death God, to put it bluntly, is actually a social beast who helps her work. Because countless creatures in countless universes are dying and being destroyed every day. How can one person be busy just by death? So she usually just picks some people she likes to personally recruit, and leaves most of the work to various Death Gods but allows these death gods to make the difference from the middle. The reason why she came to Dane this time is also very simple. First, she came to see the new newcomers to connect and bond. Don't doubt it, death is indeed more down to earth in many cases. People who have seen death say that she is an intimate sister. Dane has seen it with his own eyes, but it is not yet known whether she is an intimate sister or not. But it's quite big, which is the type he likes. The second is that death has countless subordinates of the death god, but none of them make as much profit from the price difference as Dane. She doesn't even have a steel shop left. She was also very curious, so she came over to take a look, and then discovered Dane, a little guy who didn't follow any rules at all. But death returned to the dream world with a nice smile on her lips. She thought Dane was very interesting. Not everyone has the courage to speak to her in that tone after knowing who he is. 
At the moment, Destiny, the eldest member of the family, walked over quietly. Telter, who did you just go to see? Death turned his head in surprise. You don't know who I have seen? Destiny said with a stern face, I just discovered this problem. The universe you went to has a very strange direction of destiny. He opened the book of destiny, and the destiny about that universe kept appearing and being rewritten, just like an artist drew on it and then erased it and redrawn it if he was not satisfied. And it's not just the future, the past and the future are uncertain. This is the first time I have seen this kind of destiny. Assuming that time is a line, even the power beyond time can only create countless time branches at one point in time, but cannot change the original past of this timeline because it has already been determined. Take the Flash, for example. His behavior in changing the past can only create countless timelines that intersect with that moment, but he cannot change the fact that his mother died on his own timeline. But the universe death, just visited, is different. It's like there was an invisibly hand-making changes to this timeline originally, changing its color, material, and even weaving method. The past of time is no longer certain, and the future is no longer certain. It has entered a chaos state. A certain existence is reshaping the reality on this timeline the way it wants it to be, and this happened just now, just before death returned here. So destiny has reason to suspect that death did something to cause this phenomenon to occur. The reason he's so serious is because Sandman is trapped in that universe now, and he has to figure out what's going on. Death immediately realized that the key point was Dane, but she didn't understand that Dane was just a demigod and didn't have the ability to affect super-reality. Destiny heard her explanation and said seriously, he may not be able to do it now, but what about the future? You gave him something, right? Death nodded. It's just a little greeting. Is it normal for a boss to give a greeting gift to a new subordinate when he meets him? But Destiny's face turned dark. This is not normal at all. Chapter 15, All Your Plans Hit Me in the Face. What did death give Dane? Dane figured out this problem when he returned to the real world. Ability is also related to death, but it is its opposite. Dane calls it the gift of life. He can now, like death, inject a new soul into a living body and give the soul new life. This is actually the ability to give someone reincarnation. He can choose to process or not process a soul into an empty body and let him be reborn. This processing is very intriguing. Dane discovered that he can make some not too excessive transformations to the soul, and this ability can grow with his practice. Although at this stage he can only achieve the ability to wash away the memory of the soul and make it pure, but this gave him more comprehensive powers. In the past, as the death god, he could only control the death of living beings to a limited extent, but now he can also control the life of living beings. This may be what death hopes he can learn, not just to plunder life, but also to give life. And she very thoughtfully tied this ability directly to Dane himself. This means that even if he loses the power of Shazam, he is still a complete and genuine death god. And after 24 has this ability, the scope of his death god authority is no longer limited to the earth. This is the biggest gain this time. Besides, Dane just discovered that this ability has other uses. He fished out the soul of a devil from his inventory. He had never read the memories of these devils in depth before. I am worried that seeing some bad things in it will make me unstable. But there was no way he could directly absorb the devil's soul power. They were so dirty that Dane even thought of using them as rags. But now, with the ability death gave him, he can wash away the memory of this devil's past, leaving only the purest energy, which can just replenish some of his losses. After a period of being imprisoned in the dark, the devil seemed a little confused. Under the light, it seemed to be gradually gathering consciousness. But Dane immediately used the ability he got from death to rub the devil's soul a few times. A trace of black aura peeled off from its soul, and the devil instantly let out a sharp scream. No! The voice of the soul reached Dane's ears through the spiritual channel, but he turned a deaf ear and continued to concoct. The wailing sound rang in his ears for more than ten seconds, and then all sounds disappeared. Dane looked at the pure white steamed bun-like soul in the palm of his hand and swallowed him in one gulp, 
the divine power consumed earlier, was immediately restored visibly to the naked eye. Ah, as expected, you will get rich faster if you act chivalrously and righteously. You will have to do more good deeds in the future. B.A. Dane looked at the green light ring already on his finger and didn't know what to do with it. He didn't know where the space was just now. He couldn't use magic or divine power, so he could only use the power of will. But willpower is indeed very useful. Unlike other colored light energies that have their own emotional colors, willpower does not require a person's view of good and evil, it only requires firmness. But it's this color that really requires him to get used to it. He took off the ring and put it in his private storage room. This thing might be used as a hidden trump card in the future. After Sinestro's death, the morale of his legions immediately dropped sharply, and they were defeated steadily by Mogo. On the other side of the wormhole, Hal successfully defeated a few members of the Yellow Lantern Corps, but the remaining people were not enough to maintain the wormhole. After a few minutes, it naturally dissipated. The situation of the Karuga fleet, which had lost its backup force, became even more dangerous. Dane immediately conveyed the news to Gunther. This little blue man knows how to seize opportunities. Soon after receiving the e-news from Dane, he immediately asked Kilowog to take the remaining Green Lanterns to the universe to hunt down the remaining Yellow Lantern Corps and the Karuga fleet. By this time, Dane was ready to lie back and watch the show. Kilowog led the team to the universe, followed by hundreds of surviving Green Lanterns and joined Hal. He held it in for a long time before he said to Hal, Good job, Green Lantern. At the moment he finally admitted that Hal was a Green Lantern and that there was no Green Lantern present who could do it better than him. But he still hated Sinestro for his betrayal and the carnage he had caused. Because of this, he no longer treats Dane coldly. Regardless of the past disputes between the two of them, it is an indisputable fact that he took action to save the Green Lantern Corps. So he didn't worry about Dane taking away the Yellow Lantern Ring, and just led his people to madly sweep away the surviving Yellow Lantern Corps in the universe. But his former comrade-in-arms, Boudicca, was unlucky to be caught. I have to say that this alien woman is really capable of saving a small life at such a time. Dane ignored these things. He took advantage of the gap between Green Lantern and the enemy to harvest the souls of these aliens crazily. He couldn't do it before, but now he is completely different. In his field of vision, countless souls were flying towards him like rain, and he wished he had a sack to contain them all. At this time, I have to say that Scepter is really easy to use, and I can absorb as much as I use. To this end, he also carved a small place for the parallax monster in the crystal, allowing it to stay there honestly and using more space to hold its soul. A great harvest because of the great harvest. Dane was smiling so much that he put away the scepter with satisfaction when the battlefield was cleared by the Green Lanterns. Then Hal flew over. Is everything done? He seemed to be in good condition and had no serious injuries from the battle. In fact, Hal felt that this battle was not easier than the last time he fought Sinestro alone. When he saw Sinestro's body floating in the universe, he hesitated to speak. How could Dane not see what he meant? Go ahead. After all, he has guided you before, and it is worthy of you to collect his body decently. Hal nodded hurriedly, and the green light tool appeared into a green coffin to collect Sinestro's body inside. By the way, Gunther said he wants to see you if he has something to do. Dane nodded to express his understanding and followed Hal back to Oa. At the moment, Oa is already starting to rebuild. Don't tell me, these little blue guys are not very good at anything else, but they still did a quick job of cleaning up the mess. When I first met Gunther, the first thing he said was, have you become a Green Lantern? Dane immediately denied it three times. I didn't. I'm not. Don't talk nonsense. Gunther knew that he was definitely not wrong, but Dane didn't want to admit it, and he didn't force it. It's still the same worry. If he is really recruited, who can guarantee that there won't be another Sinestro? And this three-tenth place is much stronger than Sinestro. If it happens again, he doesn't know if Oa Star can withstand it. Where's the Parallax monster? I sealed it, Dane said bluntly. Then, Gunther wanted to reply to the Parallax monster, 
but Dane rejected him on the spot before he could say anything. No, Dane said righteously. In view of your previous mistakes, I feel that you are no longer suitable to guard the Parallax monster. It is better for me to take care of it. But only the power of color light can suppress the Parallax monster, Gunther argued. Dane also reasoned with him, and he took out his light ring. I also have the power of color light now, which can be used to imprison the Parallax monster. And I don't usually use the green light's ability, and I won't let it escape due to excessive wear and tear. Ganser still shook his head. The Parallax monster is best imprisoned in an energy battery. Only constant energy can completely suppress it. Dane smiled when he heard this, and Ganser couldn't help but shudder when he saw this smile and thought, this is bad. I think what you said makes sense. He confirmed Gunther's statement and then took a closer look. So I have a good idea. Your original lantern battery is no longer used, so you have to make a new one. Then why not make one more? Just to hold parallax monsters? He raised his lamp ring. I know there is a world in the ring inside, and the parallax monster is sealed inside. I also keep it with me at all times. Isn't this safer than you finding a place to seal it? Good guy. This plan has hit me in the face. Gantz's eyelids twitched and he was speechless for a moment at his shamelessness. Chapter 116 Going to Krypton to Purchase Goods Why does the Green Lantern Corps have a yellow flaw? This is because the Asgardians imprisoned Parallax in the central energy battery in the early days of establishing the Green Lantern Corps. The power of fear of the Parallax monster has infected the energy of the Green Lantern, and the fear in the hearts of the Green Lanterns who are charged here is naturally known by it. This resulted in the weakening of the effect of green light in the corresponding spectrum, so the yellow color represented by the parallax monster became a flaw of the green lanterns. The Asgardians were well aware of this at the time, but they hid this secret from the green lantern. The weakness of green lantern's power can only be summed up in the ambiguous phrase, yellow flaw. In fact, due to some ancient past events, the Asgardians do not trust the Green Lantern as much as they appear. So to some extent, the yellow flaw is also a weakness they intentionally created for Green Lantern. But they never imagined that one day they would be attacked by others taking advantage of this weakness. Gunther couldn't help but reflect that maybe they were wrong from the beginning. In fact, it is easy to overcome the fear of yellow either by creating a new green energy source. As long as it has not imprisoned a parallax monster, slowly, the recharged Green Lantern Ring will no longer have this flaw. Or, like Hal Jordan, face your fears and overcome them, and your yellow blemishes will disappear. This is also the characteristic of the power of color light. As long as the emotion is strong enough and matches the corresponding color light, huge amounts of power can be exploded. But the second point is much more difficult than the first point. Even Green Lantern, who has a stronger willpower than ordinary people, cannot overcome the fear that points directly to his heart. If you want to prevent what happened today from happening again, then maybe it would be better to use the first method. And giving Dane a green light with a yellow defect does not seem to be a bad thing. It is equivalent to artificially creating a weakness for him. I can't make the decision on my own. We need to discuss it. But he turned around and discussed with another female little blue man named Side. Cedar? Isn't that Gunther's old friend? Good guy, you invited someone from your own faction to discuss it. You are here to give me an assist, right? Ganser couldn't hear Dane's inner criticism. After he told Sid his opinions, he quickly gained her support. He went to talk to the other Asgardians with their shared opinions. They were obviously not as easy to talk to as Side and they started arguing with Gunther directly. By doing this, you are giving up our most powerful power to an outsider. Ganser argued. He is not an outsider. He is a Green Lantern. It doesn't matter whether he admits it or not. But he has no respect for us. A little blue man couldn't help but refute him. As long as he represents good power, it doesn't matter whether he is under our control or not. Gunther blocked the Asgardian's words with righteousness. How do we know if this man will become the new Sinestro? He won't even hand over the yellow light ring. Ganser thought this man's words were ridiculous. He is not our subordinate, so those things are his trophies. 
I thought you could understand this. They continued to argue, but fortunately, except for Gunther and Sid, the other little blue people are all people who have done emotional elimination, so even the rebuttal is just a matter-of-fact argument, not excessive. With Ganser's explanation and the current situation on Oa Star, more and more Asgardians began to waver. It is not difficult to understand why they disagree with Dane's plan. They are afraid that the green light energy will go out of control and threaten their rule. But the light ring on Dane's hand is still one of the earliest works made by the As, Guardians, which means that it also has a yellow defect. And if the parallax monster is sealed in according to Dane's suggestion, then this flaw will only be greater. This is good news for Asgardians. Moreover, given the current situation on Uastar, there is no ability to suppress the parallax monster. If something goes wrong again during this period, Oastar may have to rely on Dane's power again. Regardless of whether he admits it or not, the moment he puts on the light ring, he is actually a green lantern, even if he listens to the instructions but not the announcement. So after careful consideration, the Asgardians decided to vote. The final result was four votes in favor, three votes against, and two abstentions. Dane achieved his three goals as he wished. One was to obtain knowledge about Oa, and the other was to take the Parallax monster as his own. The main thing is to have a fully functional source of green light energy. After receiving the Gift of Life ability, Dane was thinking about a question. Does Parallax have a soul? It should exist. Even though it is a body and can only be life, as long as it is alive, it should have a soul. So can Dane's ability also work on Parallax monsters? It's valuable for research, isn't it? If he could reshape Parallax's soul like any other soul, he could make the lantern his own. In this battle, he had realized that the lack of blue would be an embarrassing problem when facing a more powerful opponent. It turns out that when I was on Earth, I didn't realize it because no one could beat me. But in this space battle, facing Sinestro, who has infinite blue, it will indeed be more troublesome. Relying on the infinite energy of the Parallax monster, this guy is simply a super big blood cow, ten enhanced versions of Wolverine. Just like Superman's ability requires the accumulation of yellow sun energy, Shazam's divine body also requires the maintenance of divine power, but he actually lacks effective means of replenishing blue energy. Divine power is a relatively high level of energy and must be replaced with equal energy. Therefore, if those magic regeneration techniques are really used, the conversion rate will probably be very low, and it will take too long to wait for the automatic recovery of divine power. Therefore, the best way is to find a mutual conversion of energy of the same level to minimize the energy loss during conversion. And you said that coincidentally, the color light testicle is just up to this level. As mentioned before, Color light energy is likely to involve the divine power of creation, so it is appropriate to use it to supplement the loss of divine power. Since it takes some time to make a new lantern battery, Dane decided to take advantage of this time to go to Krypton for archaeological research. He found Hal Jordan. I'm going to take a trip to the Andromeda Galaxy. Do you want to come with me? Hal shook his head when he heard this. Oa Star is seriously destroyed this time and I need to stay and help. Do you need help from other members of the Alliance? This time Dane did not notify the members of Zhenglian in advance. One is because among the few members who can fight in space warfare, Martian Manhunter's weaknesses are too obvious, and he is not willing to interfere with Oa Star's affairs. I guess I may have had some grudges with the little blue people in the past, and I still hold grudges now. The second is that Superman Clark has too much of a virgin heart. If Clark comes here, he will never let Dane massacre the Yellow Lantern Corps. And Dane didn't have time to argue with this Boy Scout, so he simply didn't play with him. Wonder Woman is willing to come, but they have just established their relationship. Even if we haven't gone on a few dates, it would be a bit unethical to bring a girl to kill someone, huh? That's not even possible. Dane rubbed his chin and thought for a moment, suddenly feeling that he had made a mistake and that it was the best choice to bring her here, but this will probably make Zatanna jealous. Putting aside these thoughts, he brought his attention back to reality. Just listen to Hal's reply. 
No need, everyone has their own things to do, there is no reason for them to pay anything for Oa Star. That's right if you think so. The Earth is your home, and Ua is a place where you clock in and go to work. After the parallax monster is dealt with, there may not even be a need to clock in and go to work. Green Lantern has been working in their respective sectors on a daily basis, and the Earth happens to be in the sector that Hal is responsible for. Using this place as a base is not fishing, but making the post your home. He patted Hal's shoulder with satisfaction, leaving him baffled. In this case, I'll will leave first. Hal nodded and watched Dane fly into the sky and enter a green wormhole. He scratched his head and asked a little strangely, Why can Dane use the light ring to open wormholes now? Only in hindsight did he realize that Dane might have become the new Green Lantern. But, which sector is he responsible for? According to the data recorded in the Lantern Ring, Krypton is located in Sector 2813, and the Lantern Ring database has detailed coordinate information. As soon as he exited the wormhole, Dane came to a meteorite field. These meteorites were all fragments produced after the destruction of Krypton. He shuttled among the meteorites and found many green shiny stones, the texture of which looked like jade. Dane began to purchase large quantities of goods without any hesitation, putting all the kryptonite he could find into his personal space. However, he discovered that there was only green kryptonite here and no other colors. It seems that other types of kryptonite can only be developed by himself. After picking up enough kryptonite, Dane sets up a portal here so that he can come here to purchase scoops in the future. Then he continued to search around to see if he could find any technology left by the Langshing people. Chapter 117 It's messed up! After working on Krypton for more than half a month, Dane finally decided to go back when he felt that there was really nothing to collect. He opened the wormhole and first went to Oa Star to check out the situation. He found that the original lantern energy source had been repaired, but Gunther said that they needed to redesign the energy source for the Parallax Monster. In the past, we were too careless and let the Parallax Monster escape, so this time we will design it to be stronger. Dane didn't say anything, said hello to Hal who was busy at work, opened the wormhole, and returned to Earth. Returning to Earth, he first returned to the Hall of Justice, where he happened to see Diana training here. Seeing Dane's return, Diana was first happy, then angry, and struck him with the god-destroying sword. Dane dodged sideways, and the Vulcan sword passed by him, but he knew that this move had neither speed nor power. Diana was just venting her dissatisfaction with not hearing from him for so long. Dane could only dodge throughout the whole process but could not fight back. After Diana vented her anger, she threw down her weapon and rushed towards Dane, and he reached out and hugged her. Sorry, I came back late. Don't let this happen again. Dane could only nod, and then the two of them went home together. He stayed at Diana's house for a full week before she let him go. A week later, she was radiant and seemed more beautiful than before. Dane 130, on the other hand, has entered the realm of a sage and feels indifferent to everything. He excused himself to deal with company matters and Diana let him go. Dane always felt that she seemed to know something, because he was not very happy to see Diana before leaving. But he didn't understand why she acquiesced if she really knew. Maybe it's my own misunderstanding? He learned from Cortana that Zatanna had a magic show recently, so he set off to go. As soon as he sat down in his seat, Zatanna spotted him. She screamed in joy on the stage and flew down, right into Dane's arms like a baby swallowing into the forest. At that moment, Dane seemed to feel countless resentful and jealous eyes, which were the resentments of all the men present. But he just smiled at them and almost let everyone break their guard. I'm gonna kill this guy. Someone couldn't help but said bitterly. But he was stopped by someone on the side. Don't go, that guy looks like a rich man, and Miss Tana is the one who took the initiative. The man said and felt his heart break. Zatanna is the goddess in the main series second only to Wonder Woman. I don't know how many people admire me. Moreover, Wonder Woman never shows up unless there is a disaster, while Zatanna is more approachable and often appears on major stages. Just like the star effect, her fame is getting bigger and bigger. At the moment when they see their goddess in the arms of others, 
How can they not be jealous and crazy? Countless people present were her supporters. To them, this hug was no less than a face-to-face -face NTR, which made them want to kill someone. When did you come back? Zatanna said softly in his arms. Dane opened his eyes and told lies. Today I will come to see you as soon as I come back. Zatanna's arms tightened around her. They ignored the commotion at the scene and disappeared with a flash of magic light. Only the howl of a defeated dog was left. He stayed with Zatanna for another week, and some things happen naturally. Once the relationship changes, Zatanna can't help but worry a little more about gain and loss, which is why he stays here for so long. A week later, he returned to the Hall of Justice and began to retrieve information to check the latest news about Jenglian members. Clark recently moved to the metropolis. I heard that he met a female reporter and the two had a great conversation. He seemed to want to pursue the female reporter. Dane retrieved the half reporter's identity, and sure enough, it was Lois. The two of them are really destined to meet each other. Fortunately, Clark asked Dane to cast the confusion curse in advance, so his identity has not been exposed yet. Lois, the so-called reporter man, has extraordinary insight. According to Cortana's information, she seems to be tracking down Superman's true identity recently. Clark still dares to move forward at this time. This is really... Dane shook his head. After all, this was Clark's first serious pursuit of a girl, and no one else could say anything. However, he remembered that Louise, a journalist, was not very peaceful, and even dared to go into Al-Qaeda alone to conduct interviews, which was not an ordinary boldness. Then he looked at Gotham. This broken place was still the same as before. It's just that after a major purge, the crises that could lead to the destruction of the entire city have indeed become much less likely. But I don't know if it's because of this, but there are more gangsters in Gotham than before. From the analysis of the information given by Cortana, there is the shadow of Penguin, Cece, behind these little gangs. Sk. People who rely on their brains are different. Batman still wants to find people in Gotham, but he doesn't know that Penguin has already set up his base in Bloodhaven. Yei is still too young to be able to play with this old Yinbi, but when checking the information, he discovered something interesting. He heard before that Barbara wanted to form a team of her own, and this time he saw that it was already taking shape. In addition to Poison Ivy who has already been booked, Harley Quinn. Harley has also been absorbed into her new team. Harley's current ability is not weak, although her skills are not as good as those of Barbara, a heroine who has been carefully trained by Batman. But she made up for her lack of skills with her power to produce miracles, and she is now one of the best girls in the team with strange powers. If three or five big men met her, they would end up with broken legs and hands. He took a look at Harley's current situation and found that she was not bad. Her origin was changed and she did not become a villain, but instead changed in the direction of a superhero. But in the future, when Harley really steps on the stage, she will probably become an anti-hero and she won't have so many coy ideas about killing people. In addition to the three members known to Dane, Barbara also introduced two new members, both of whom emerged after the release of Zhenglian, Huntress and Black Canary. Dane learned a long time ago that Batman has no daughter or adopted daughter, so this Huntress should be the version of Helena Bertinelli. She does not have super abilities, but has strong fighting abilities. It seems that she decided to become a superhero after being encouraged by Barbara. According to Cortana's assessment, her fighting ability may have reached Barbara's level. This is already a very high rating. You must know that Barbara's physical ability has been improved after surgical implantation of nanoparticles, and she is almost the same as Captain America. Before undergoing Dane's surgery, she was already too tall for eight or nine big men. Now, she can beat the shit out of the gangsters in the crime alley, and now even Nightwing probably doesn't dare to say that he can definitely beat her. I hope they both live harmoniously. Dane saw the Huntress's uniform on the big screen. Fortunately, it wasn't the version with too little fabric. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fighting criminals, and it would be more like giving out welfare. Then there is Black Canary, whose real name is Dinah Laurel Lance, which is a Superman class. Dane didn't know much about Black Canary, so he looked at it more carefully. 
She possesses a sonic super ability, hypnotic ability, which can interfere with enemies and even imitate other people's voices. Dane thought to himself, I, if it were Shazam from before, would he be turned back to a mortal by the voice she imitated? Try Black Adam next time? However, the most common use of Black Canary is to directly use sound waves to attack enemies with the energy of sound waves. It seems like superheroes all like the idea that power is king. As for other members of Zhenglian, Martian Manantor is still working diligently in the Pentagon and has nothing to say. But then Dane discovered that he had a wife, and they have been married for many years, but they have never had children. Constantine. This guy didn't know where he went, and even Cortana couldn't find him. Forget it, the contract is in his hands anyway, and even if a person dies, his soul cannot escape from his hands. And maybe the ability he just got from death can be tested on him. Playing with things like bringing the dead back to life. After roughly understanding what happened during this period, Dane got up and left the Hall of Justice, heading to Harley and Poison Ivy's residence. He planned to rest there for a week. Stop pretending. He just wants to show off. He will be tired from solving two world-destroying disasters in a row. Chapter 118, Fallen Angel Lucifer. On this day, Dane was checking Kondak's information in the Justice Building. Constantine suddenly walked in with a strange look on his face. His expression piqued Dane's curiosity. Look at your expression. What's going on? Constantine seemed a little embarrassed to say it, but Dane knew that he was just showing off. Sure enough, after hesitating for a while, Constantine finally said it. Boss, I owe a debt. How new is this? Dane looked at him strangely. Isn't it common for you to be in debt? Is this so surprising? He lost interest in an instant, lowered his head and continued reading Kondak's information. Seeing that he didn't care at all, Constantine immediately became anxious. Boss, you must help me with this matter. Now Dane really felt a little strange. With Constantine's ability, he actually had a debt he couldn't afford. He immediately understood that Constantine probably owed a debt to the magic world. Sure enough, this time, Constantine stopped being secretive and told the matter directly. I owe a big shot, a big favor, and asked him to do me a favor. Constantine told Dane everything that happened to him recently. As the Justice League's magical advisor, Constantine is one of the rare members of the League who has not chosen to hide his identity, because he needs to accept some commissions to earn money for tobacco and alcohol. From time to time, he also needs money when he sprints bravely for the happiness of his second brother. And no advertising can be more powerful than the identity of member of the Justice League. So as a Hell detective who has become famous recently, he received a special commission. A girl named Angela came to me recently and asked me to investigate the suicide of her sister. You still care about this kind of thing? Dane was surprised. Constantine explains, Angela suspected that her sister had gotten into something dirty because she was a devout believer, and according to the teachings, suicide was not allowed to go to heaven. When he said this, Dane suddenly realized that this was the story of the movie version of Constantine. He glanced at Constantine, the one you honored was worse. Constantine felt that his eyes were a little strange, but he continued, I did find something when I was investigating this matter, Gabriel, do you know? Dane definitely knows, the angel in the Bible. She's in Los Angeles. She planned all of this. This seems unlikely. Although he had read this story in his previous life, Dane, who was no longer a magic newbie, still wanted to ask clearly. Angels, like demons, cannot physically appear in the human world. This is an iron rule. Constantine took a puff of cigarette before saying, You are right, unless Gabriel finds an opportunity to bypass this iron law. Dane's face darkened. She found a receptor in the human world? Demons can come to the world through some means, and Angel definitely has similar methods. That is to find a pure and pious virgin, let her devote herself voluntarily, and the Angel will possess her body. Although most of Angel's power will be sealed in this way, it is still powerful enough to destroy most demons. And what about the voluntarily dedicated virgin? Her soul will enter heaven and return to the embrace of the Lord. From a human perspective, this behavior looks like murder. To be honest, it is not sacred at all. 
However, one is willing to fight, and the other is willing to suffer between the Holy Virgin and Angel, and Dane is too lazy to pay attention to them. Constantine confirmed Dane's guess. So as you can imagine, facing an angel, my magic doesn't work. He specializes in black magic, and his magic level has improved a lot recently due to sufficient casting materials. But no matter what, he can't defeat a serious angel. Even though Gabriel had sealed away most of his power, she played with Constantine like a child. In the end, I really had no choice, so I borrowed some power from a certain existence in hell. Having said this, Constantine looked regretful. Dane's heart moved, and he remembered the plot in the movie. He asked tentatively, Did you find Lucifer? Constantine looked at him in surprise. How do you know? Dane was speechless. Who do you want to ask for help? Do you have to ask the boss? Even if you pick up the wool of the three palace demons? I did ask Lucifer for help, but you weren't there when I looked for you. Dane's expression was subtle. He was on Oa at the time, and maybe he was still having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Miss Death. How could he have time to talk to a rough old man like you? Lucifer responded to my request. At this point, Constantine's tone dropped. He defeated Gabriel easily, tore off her wings and reduced her to a mortal. His tone was grave, but as a price for helping me, he wants to take away my soul. Ah, this is because your soul does not belong to you. Dane scratched his head. Constantine's tone suddenly became lighter. But guess what? Lucifer can't get my soul. Hey. The conversation suddenly changed and he gritted his teeth. He said he couldn't get my soul. He said I had already sold it. Boss, can you tell me who I sold my soul to? Dane slowly took out the contract that Constantine had signed from his inventory. The cover was burned by the flames, revealing the parchment inside the white paper. He said leisurely, You must have sold it to me. Your soul has been my property from the moment you signed this contract, and Lucifer can't take it away. His suspicions were confirmed. Constantine's hands were shaking like a Parkinson's patient, and he was pointing at Dane, unable to say a word. I, John Constantine, have been around for many years and have never failed to deceive people. Today, I fell into the hands of a guy like you with thick eyebrows and big eyes. Don't look at me like this. I'm doing it for your own good. Constantine pointed at himself in disbelief. For my own good? He has a word with M and a word with F that he wants to use in combination, and there are also many words with S that he wants to blurt out. Please give me flowers. But he had a hard idea in his heart. His soul and economy were in someone's hands, so he could only follow his heart. Your soul is safer in my hands than in your own, because you like to write bad checks to others. Although he regards the other party as a tool, Dane considers himself a good boss who is considerate of his subordinates. He patiently explained, Putting your soul with me has many benefits. First of all, you will no longer encounter misfortune when using black magic. After hearing what he said, Constantine suddenly reacted, as if, dot it was indeed the case. The bad luck he encountered while casting spells almost disappeared, but Lucifer's incident made him know that the misfortune didn't not happen, but that it accumulated even more. However, Dane quickly said this, Definitely the most important thing is that those empty promises you made to the outside world, if there is such a persistent creditor, he is not looking for you. Constantine was thoughtful when he heard this. The Lucifer you summoned, I suspect he came for me. At night, after 21 Howard, Dane teleports to Los Angeles. As soon as he arrived here, he was noticed by the spirit of Los Angeles. So when Dane turned around, he found that the spirit of Los Angeles had changed his skin and was standing there waiting for him. Angelus. This city spirit transformed into a high school girl, wearing a hot girl style. See you again, how are you doing? Dane nodded and exchanged casual greetings. It's not bad. I save the world and make a little money. My life is very fulfilling. Angelus rolled her eyes. She walked up and put her arm around Dane. Have you found the city you wanted? she said, referring to the spirit of Kondak. Dane shook his head. She seems a little shy and is avoiding me on purpose. He entered the world of nothingness in Kondak several times and almost caught the spirit of Kondak, but he let her escape every time. But it doesn't matter. He is patient. At worst, he can wait until Kondak is completely obtained and then wait and see. Recently, 
there is a trend that the international gang cannot handle it. What a joke. Can you be Umbrella's rival compared to industrial ability? Angelus looked at the direction Dane was going. His eyes flashed. You want to go to the bar? I heard that a new bar opened here recently, so I came here to take a look. Angelus quietly grabbed his arm and reminded, There are better bars everywhere in Los Angeles. We don't have to go there. But when she persuaded Dane in a subtle way, he had already taken Angela's into the bar, called Lux. Then I heard Dane say meaningfully, It's very common in ordinary bars, but the bar opened by Lucifer Morningstar is naturally different. What's more, he has already invited me. It would be rude not to come, are you right? In the bar, a man who was not tall, but had a handsome face and blonde hair turned around. I've been waiting for you for a long time, the new death god. Mr. Dane Davis Chapter 119 I didn't know I could be so awesome. Lucifer was not called Dane's most common title on the market now, Shazam, but Death God. Sure enough, was it his contact with death that attracted the other party's attention? Dane smiled and stepped forward to shake hands with him. I am sincerely afraid, Your Excellency Lucifer. From God's perspective, Dane can see more truth than Constantine. In Constantine's eyes, Lucifer's power was too great for him to see through the nature of this hell monarch. But Dane can. The gift of life gives him the ability to see through the essence of other people's souls, including Lucifer. He said with regret, It turns out you are just a duplication. He will definitely regret that he is different from the Endless Family. The Endless Family can also appear in countless parallel universes or other multi-universes at the same time like other gods, but those are not duplications, they are all real entities. But below the Warren family, starting from God, there is no great God who can come in person. Subject to the rules, these great gods will either duplicate themselves into the world or give the 670 themselves a knife, cut off their flesh, and weaken their strength before coming into the world. Lucifer is a bit of both. As the second most powerful man in DC after God, if he wants to exist in the world, it is not enough to just create a duplication, he must also cut himself. So at the moment Lucifer is a duplication, and also lost version of his wings, but Lucifer himself didn't care. He had lived too long, and had already passed the level of pursuing power. Whether it's duplication or not, I'm still me, unique, eleven. He asked Mesk to pour a drink for Dane and invite him to sit down. Angelus wisely sat far away and did not participate. She is not qualified for this. Dane picked up the goblet and took a sip and said in surprise, Jano Armagnac in 1980? Lucifer showed a heartfelt smile. Yes, it seems that it is right to treat you to a drink. Dane tasted it carefully and thanked him. After a while, he put down the wine glass. Did Sir Lucifer come for Constantine, or did he come for me? Lucifer leaned back and folded his right leg over his left leg. Constantine is a funny guy, but just funny. His eyes stared deeply into Dane, as if he wanted to look into his soul. But what I'm more curious about is why death is so interested in a demigod. Dane drank the wine in the glass again. Have I let you down? On the contrary, I regret not being able to talk to you in person. But the next second after he finished saying this, his expression changed slightly, and Dane didn't know what happened to him. But after Lucifer calmed down, he said, That doesn't seem to be the case. What's wrong? Isn't the Riddler dead? Could it be that he also has the Riddler virus? Dane was speechless. However, when he thought that Lucifer's body was actually a multi-universe or higher-level existence, and that time meant nothing to him, he suddenly had a bold conjecture in his mind. Lucifer noticed his expression and said helplessly, You are very smart, but there are some things you should not say out loud. This timeline is already messy enough. Don't let it get messed up anymore. Dane was amazed. He didn't expect that he would have such an awesome day. Lucifer was really helpless. His fate was indeed unpredictable. He originally just wanted to satisfy his curiosity. But I didn't expect that I would become a part of this fate unintentionally. He was sitting here, seemingly just drinking with Dane, but at a higher level, the conversation between his body and Dane had already begun. One of the most important signs of the multi-universe level is that their original existence is not affected by time. They are higher than time. So from the time he became a multi-universe, 
the collection of past and future, is originally that person, even if the current Dane does not have that power. But the future has already been determined, and Lucifer can feel that a gaze from the future is projected on him. The power of the main body is also competing with the owner of that site, but the result is no distinction between top and bottom. This is similar to the way Dr. Manhattan exists. All individuals in the past and future are not divided, they have been integrated into a whole. But Lucifer had a vague feeling that the other party was probably more than that. But this duplication does not have the ability to see through the truth. Now that the main body and the other party have already started a confrontation on the timeline, Lucifer, who is incomparable in strength at the moment, can only say nothing and just pretend that he is just dragging Dane to drink. But Dane was smarter and more imaginative than he thought, and he obviously realized something. Lucifer could only lament that some people and certain things are really destined. Just like God is destined to create the world, and he is destined to fall into heaven, is there no way to change this? Is the power of destiny really irresistible? Unable to resist? He is not willing to give in. But Lucifer doesn't talk, so Dane can't just drink with him, even if you are Lucifer. Wouldn't it be better for me to spend more time with my girlfriends during this time? Your Excellency Lucifer, it's easy to talk about Constantine. He is your son, after all. Anyway, Dane doesn't know whether this son is his biological son, so just assume he is. But that angel Gabriel... She should have been expelled from heaven, right? Lucifer came back to his senses and looked at Dane a little funny. Good guy, you have decided to target Angel. This is not showing any shame to God, but this is none of my business as the Lord of Hell. So Lucifer said, it would be too serious to say that she was expelled. She was just punished to stay in the world, and she was not allowed to return to heaven before this body died. This condition may not seem harsh, but the punishment is actually quite severe. Just like what Gabriel said to Constantine in the movie, she cannot help ordinary people for the purpose of making profit for herself, that is, going to heaven. Because such a heart is ungodly, heaven will not accept her, and she couldn't commit suicide. Considering that this body was that of a holy virgin on earth, if Gabriel dared to commit suicide, he would probably be violating the commandment of murder. The above rule is doubly effective for Gabriel, who has been relegated to mortal status. But, Angel, who was demoted to a mortal, is also valuable. Although she has lost her divine power, she still has a lot of precious knowledge in her mind. Dane is a man who doesn't refuse knowledge that comes to him. If you don't take advantage of it now, why wait? So he tentatively asked Lucifer, do you know where she is now? Lucifer nodded, she is an angel and a devout believer. She can definitely only stay in the church. As for which church? He looked to the side. Dane followed his line of sight, and saw it was Angelus. Oh, that's true. As long as you're in Los Angeles, no one can escape Angelus's sight. Besides, there are churches everywhere here. Isn't it easy to find a place to stay? Then Dane turned his attention to Lucifer. Can he put some pressure on him? He was thinking seriously. I advise you to be kind. Lucifer's face darkened. Although I can't do anything to you, in fact, we are just the same. Besides, point eight, my strength is all innate. You can't learn it. When Dane heard this, he shook his head regretfully and turned towards Dr. Angelus. This realistic scene made Lucifer's eyelids twitch and he almost lost his guard. Isn't Death's vision a little bad? Why would he fall in love with a bastard like him? No wonder that bastard Constantine also works for him. These two are the same. Meskin was behind him, looking at him sex, strangely. You actually have the nerve to accuse others. She would never say this. On the other side, Dane sat next to Angelus and she seemed surprised. What are you done talking? The discussion is over, or it is still being discussed. This matter has now become Schrodinger's thing. Dane pointed to the top of his head and shrugged. Angelus couldn't understand and looked confused. I'm looking for you to ask where Gabriel is now. She should still be in Los Angeles, right? 